Folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. So if you could take your seats, that would be great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we could please take our seats so we can get our program started. Grab that last glass of wine and your food and please be seated. Good evening and welcome to the Empath New Heights Celebration. We're all very excited to be here, especially given the circumstances we've all been through in the last two years. So thank you all very much for coming this evening. We really appreciate it. It's nice to see old friends, but it's nice to see a lot of new faces. I've been around a long time. 
too long to tell you how long. <laughs> um, and it's really nice to see new friends. And we also want to thank and welcome those of you who are on Zoom. I'm not sure where I'm looking at for that camera, but thank you for joining us. People are here from across the country, which is a really good thing that came out of our last two years, right? That we could do that. My name is DRC Goldman. I'm the vice chair of the board of trustees for Empath. It's my pleasure to welcome you here tonight to this historic moment where we bid a very fond and heartfelt farewell to our illustrious leader of the past 15 plus years, Beth Babcock. <laughs> she hates that. <laughs> And, and very excitedly, we welcome with open arms and such excitement, the former mayor of Boston, Kim Janey. You'll hear from both of them tonight. And you will of course hear from Kim many more times in the future. I've been a loyal supporter of this organization for over 32 years. I was part of the legacy, one of the legacy organizations, the Women's Educational Industrial Union, along with several of my comrades in here. So we go way back. I'm here for a reason all these years. The work that this organization has sustained and done over the last three decades that I've been involved is nothing short of miraculous. We've literally found a bridge and a pathway, not found, a lot of work and hard work and research and trial and error to help families get themselves with our help and support and training systems out of the poverty cycle. It works. And on top of that, we have proof that it works. Pretty incredible stuff. And not only do we get to share that with our community here locally in Massachusetts and New England, but over the last few years really have spread this work throughout the United States and even a couple of places abroad to share our training, to share the bridge, to share all the things that make this place so incredible. So thank you so much for your support and for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. We really need that support. We have exciting things coming in the future and we're really grateful for your participation. Now, without further ado, to get the real festivities going, I want to introduce you to a dear friend and also fellow board member, Pam Murray, who will introduce Beth. Thank you, DRC. Good evening, everyone. And thank you all for coming together tonight, both in person and virtually. Indulge me here for a bit of history. Only 16 years ago, the Women's Industrial Union and the Crittenden were two fine Boston organizations doing responsible work, helping their clients, changing lives. But it was in a Bostonian way. It was modest and did not see over the horizon. The events of the early 2000s along with new board leadership at both nonprofits, created the opportunity to explore broader thinking and to usher in an era of unselfishness about scale, innovation, and sharing. After many hours of analysis, debate, conversation, and yes, candidly, some horse trading and cajolery, the boards of the Union and the Crittenden, led by the able Ed Pendergast, came to an unconventional decision. We would merge. It was an uncharacteristic move, and all of us involved knew that the success of the new entity would rely on finding an extraordinary leader. We searched high and low. And when I say low, 
That included the cheesy bar at the Newton Marriott, where I know you've all been at some point in your life. And it was there Ed and I met Beth Babcock. And it was immediately clear, even there, okay, that we would found the person to take these merging organizations to the next level. A sense of urgency, her imagination, her organizational skills, her collaborative nature, all fused what we had hoped would happen in a way that none of us could imagine with respect to the size, growth, and impact of the new organization. We are now a national and international model. We are changing lives far out of proportion to where we were less than two decades ago. And it is attributable in great part to the work of Beth Babcock. Beth constantly challenges us, challenges us all, staff, donors, trustees, clients, partners, to be entrepreneurial in our approach, intentional in our motives, and rigorous with evaluation. Thanks to Beth, we are flourishing. We can now turn Empath over to our next leader, Kim Janey, with confidence that she will write new chapters of accomplishment for us. Thank you, Kim. But we are here tonight to reflect on Beth's legacy. And our watchword is gratitude. Beth, thank you for your time, your wisdom, your good counsel, your friendship, and your mentorship. Each of us who know you is better. Each of us who have worked with you is better. All of the empath clients, women and families are better. The city, the state, the wide world, all are better for your work. May your retirement be full of abundance, reflection, and all the joy that you so richly deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend and our leader, Beth Babcock. You're getting up and down almost so much that I feel as though I should be going for communion. And I'm not even Catholic. Um, thank you all for coming here and for being a part of this celebration and this sort of coming back from COVID. My goodness, I bought this jacket for an event that was supposed to happen um, right before COVID hit. And I took it out of my closet tonight and it still had the tags on it. <laughs> because it ain't gone nowhere in the past two years. Um, you know, it feels like only a moment ago that I was being introduced in an event just like this one as the new CEO of Empath. 16 years ago, can you believe it? Some of you were there. We were celebrating months of hard work, bringing together two organizations, the Crittenden Hastings House and the Women's Education Industrial Union into a new entity. And we called it Crittenden Women's Union, and over the years, it became Empath. At that time, we were an assortment of housing and training programs designed to help women get ahead. And when we did some market research, Pam will remember this, in preparation for the merger, we found out that we weren't well known even in Boston, never mind anywhere else. No matter. Because when I got up to speak that first night, all I could think was how lucky I was to have been given the chance to take the wheel of this new organization with a board and staff right for reinvention. All that energy and eagerness and talent just waiting to rip. And I said to everyone in the room that night, 
I feel like somebody has just handed me the keys to a Maserati. It was great. I stood there looking at everyone and it was as if I could feel the collective hum of that beautiful engine just waiting to open throttle and tear. But I couldn't know then, not really, just how far we would go. So I didn't know all of you. But you would take us to places where there were no maps, where you'd find the rare grand vistas with the cleanest air and the stars bright enough to navigate by. I didn't know you then and just what you could do. So help me out here. I need some help. Uh, we're going to have a little call and response here for people who know about call and response. Raise your hands. I know you're over there, ladies. I see you. Raise your hands and make a little noise if you have participated in our programs. Woo, 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 woo. I know we didn't know each other then in 2006, but you guys are something else. How could I have known how powerful you would be? How you'd trash all previous assumptions society had about what struggling families could accomplish? how you changed the whole human services landscape and put families where they belonged, in charge, the drivers of their own dreams. And along the way, you helped us design everything. You were patient and kind and taught us how to make things better and gave us your energy, your energy to keep on going. You doubled and tripled your incomes, told us about your new jobs, and sent us pictures of your weddings and graduations and your new homes and those of your kids. You were the GPS that told us we were on track, even when we weren't completely sure where we were going. We owe you everything, everything. Okay, so help me out again. Raise your hands and make a little bit of noise if you have been a board member for Empath. There you are. How could I have known all those years ago just how fearless you would be, all the risks you'd be willing to take, tossing state old programs out the window like so much unwanted baggage. You were willing to shape us into an unheard of vehicle. Call it an action tank. Yeah, that's good. That's a think tank that actually does stuff. And we'll invent entirely new ways of working and we'll call it mobility mentoring. And we'll scale it through open sourcing and fund and pilot it with almost no money. And until the money comes in, that is because it's gonna be so good and people are gonna want it so much that they're gonna just buy it from us and everybody's gonna want in. And you were there every step of the way saying, I see it. Makes sense, go for it, gutsy, but not crazy. Asking good questions, making us careful, and sometimes just the opposite, pushing us to go faster. You said, there are times when you have to risk to grow and spend money to build. And that's what a strategic endowments are for. And so don't be afraid to use it. And our CFO, Richard, where are you? Richard, our CFO would pucker. But now he has to admit that your consistent fearlessness and advice, not to mention your financial support, have taken us into the homes of over 350,000 families all across the United States and beyond. And we've raised tens of millions of dollars from those funders who come, came to see just what you as board members saw and believe in us just the way that you did. You are an inspiration. And then there were the staff. Some of you I just met, but most of you came along the way. Join me here, all you glorious, wonderful people. Raise your hands and voices if you've ever worked Grand Pass. <laughs> right. 
you're beautiful. We didn't know, right? Just how much we'd invest in this great ride and all the places that it would take us. The work, your uncompromising drive for excellence, your unflagging belief in our participants and their rights to better lives and better programs and support from agencies like ours transformed us into just what we dreamt we could be. The go-to source for what works to move families out of poverty. You took us as expert advisors to the White House, Capitol Hill, the World Bank, the Hague, the European Commission, and even Sesame Street. Our ideas have been published by countless think tanks and national journals. And when the secretary of HHS under Obama needed inspiration to build better welfare programs, he came more than once just to hang out and get answers from us. We even won the very first billion dollar wage gain challenge for showing we could raise over 10,000 families wages by more than $10,000 a year. Pretty amazing, huh? And you did it, all of you, you took us there. And the exec team, formerly called leadership by the way, both past and present, and Jeff who wrangles us. Where are you guys? Shout out for the E-team. We never would have gotten out of the garage without you. Together, we've navigated this journey through fires, literally, blizzards, pandemics, financial crashes, weddings, surgeries, divorces, beautiful babies. You've led the invention of all we hold dear, our breakthrough tools and ways of working, our learning platforms and networks, our excellent programs. You've been there through it all, giving everything, everything and always with unvarnished varnish, honesty and trust and thank God, humor. You've made this work more than a job. You've made it transcendent. And finally, I come to the rest of you. Who here has been one of our organizational partners? Volunteering for us, funding us, academic partners, Jack, I love you. Um, <laughs> uh, joining or joining our organization as one of the 150 plus fellow organizations in our exchange network. Raise your hands. Hi, hi, hi. And then reach down and hug yourselves for all that you've done to help us. You're the fuel, the fuel that you've given us to keep this beautiful machine humming, the things you've shown us so that we could find our way. Hopping into the car with us so we could inspire each other, sing crazy car songs, and reach our aspirations together. Where would we have gone without you? I couldn't know at the beginning that you were all out there, just waiting to share your gifts, take up the work every day to help make it better. And when we didn't have the answers, you had them. And man, did we need them. Think about it. The problem of poverty is so big and so many people deserve so much better help than what we give them. How much of that size problem could one person ever solve? It's overwhelming. But when you organize hundreds and ultimately thousands of people to collaborate, man, that's what I call horsepower. And in the end, what we built together took us to places beyond our dreams. You, you did it. You see, it was always about you, always about you. And along the way, whether the journey was scenic or terrifying, I had my family to come home to. Paul, the man I married 45 years ago before I even knew who I was, who's been my safe harbor, my truest advisor and an unending source of hugs and laughter. And my children, Kate, David, and Ted, who's been so generous with their lives, freely allowing Paul and me to be a part of their own journeys, their careers, their travels, their plays, their music, and most importantly, their families. Sarah and Paul, such remarkably wonderful people that I thank my lucky stars 
every day that they've come into our lives. And finally, our beautiful grandchildren, Paul and Aurelia, who've brought me back full circle, back to the beginning, experiencing the unfettered joy of play. And let's pretend. My family's been there all along, teasing and teaching, and most of all, helping me to forgive myself for my endless shortcomings and to get on with the business of appreciating this, our truly abundant life. All in all, I have to say, it's been one hell of a ride. And when I go back to that day 16 years ago, it's true, I couldn't have imagined where we'd go, but I felt in my bones it would be something special. And it has been. Thank you for all you have done to make it the trip of a lifetime. It's been replete and remarkable, and I wouldn't change one single mile. And with that, Kim, I pass the keys to you and wish you all the joy and fulfillment your own journey will inevitably create. Thank you. Thank all of you. It's always been about you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I promised Beth earlier that I would not get up here and cry. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I'd like to say hello. My name is Lashana Walker. I am a member of Empaths Board, um, the chair of the Institutional Advancement Committee, and a graduate of Empath CFO program. Shout out to the CFO alumni in the back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am here tonight to introduce some people who will say some words of gratitude uh, for Beth's leadership and wish her well in her retirement. First up, um, Senator Jamie Eldridge. Senator Eldridge. Thank you so much, Lachani. Good evening, everyone. And when I got the invitation to attend today's tribute to Beth's retirement, I just had to come because I'm just so proud to partner with Beth uh, for 16 years of my 20 years as a legislator. And uh, first, I just want to say that as a, as a first-term legislator 20 years ago, I remember going to the Critton Women's Union on Arlington Street to learn about all the challenges that low-income families have across Massachusetts, and it was incredibly powerful. And then to have Beth come on as the CEO of Empath and to come to the State House to bring mobility mentoring uh, participants and to bring all of your data and facts um, and to tell the stories of the impact of Empath's programs and also the disparities around poverty and inequality in Massachusetts was incredibly powerful. And, and the thing that is really carried on so many things, but the cliff effect, the cliff effect that uh, those that once they earn that extra amount of money immediately lose public benefits. And that's something we've been working to eradicate for 20 years. That is something I learned from Beth Babcock. And I just think that when Beth would come to the State House with, with all the wonderful staff, and uh, participants would talk about the benefits of the program, and we would talk about all the policy that needed to change at the state level. The thing that just always struck me is how deeply concerned and how passionate Beth was at each one of those briefings. And you could just see it on her face. You could see it the way she talked about the program, the way she talked about Empath, and the way she talked about the participants. And I don't have to tell anyone here 
the incredible innovative uh, model that, that Empath has created through mobility mentoring and its other programs. But I also just wanna add, uh, Beth and I served on the Asset Development Commission about 10 years ago. And I, I really wanna make sure it's clear the really incredible changes in anti-poverty policy and removing barriers for low-income families across Massachusetts, the expansion of the EITC, eliminating asset limits for people on public assistance, financial assistance in the match savings program. All those things came out of the work that Beth and I worked on and Beth really led with the research and data and, and showing the impact the program had on its participants. So um, Beth, I just wanna say, thank you so much for your leadership. Um, Empath is one of the major organizations that's impacted state policy and impacted state legislators. And I'll just never forget the passion you brought every time uh, you came up in Beacon Hill. So thank you so much for your leadership. And I have a citation here. I'm not going to read it, um, but I'll present it to you. But Beth, thank you so much for your leadership. Best wishes in your retirement and honored to work with you for the past 16 years. Thank you so much, Senator Eldridge, and a big thank you to the Massachusetts Senate for this. Now we are going to hear from a few more people who wanted to say something on this day. Um, there were far too many people who wanted to say thank you to Beth for the incredible work she has done at Impact. We couldn't possibly get them all up here on stage tonight, but here are a few words from just a few of those people. You can check the screen. Beth Babcock is one of the most amazing leaders that I've ever worked with. Beth gave me the platform to become the leader that I am today. Beth, you are a superstar, simply brilliant. A day never went by when I wasn't in awe of Beth's talent and her intellect and her willingness to share those gifts with all of us. The first time we met, I knew we had a winner. We immediately saw someone fiercely committed to the mission of economic equality and innovative in framing the approach. The result of that meeting and 16 years of diligent program review, testing of new ideas, and encouraging partnerships is the empath we have today. Beth brings tremendous energy to work that can be really challenging. She brings incredible intellect, and she also brings real empathy. She lives and breathes the highest levels of strategic thinking and uh, exemplary execution. I will always remember Beth as someone who actively lives out the belief that our circumstances never define who we are, nor who we will become. Not only did you bring in concepts such as the bridge to self-sufficiency and mobility mentors, you really made sure that those programs had an extraordinary impact on the client base. You really shaped the way I approached this work. And as the years go by, I believe more and more that mobility mentoring is the best way to work with families experiencing poverty. Your positive attitude has been tremendous. It's been an incredible journey with you and the team at Empath. You have had such an impact on the participants, and the families that we work with, from just writing notes on incentive checks to your presence at community meetings. You are a hero. You are a leader. And you're just an amazing person. You have been an incredible leader, a great friend, and have left a tremendous legacy for all of those who have cared about families and their economic mobility. It's been my honor and privilege to work with you over these last eight years to see all the success Empath has had, the great innovations you've made, and the wonderful outcomes. We would like to thank you for all your thoughts, support, your kind words. 
in the past few years when we introduced the mobility mentoring approach in the Netherlands. We hope we will see you again. I personally am grateful for the many conversations back and forth we've had about the challenges of fighting poverty and all the many different issues that face folks who run agencies. One of the highlights of, of my experience um, from you has been your unwavering desire to want better for our families and for you honestly opening up your heart in such a way that that says I have all this information I want to share it I was so inspired by the science used to really understand families in poverty and the direction that she's taken MPAC to spread that knowledge to hundreds of exchange members. In 2006, Beth reluctantly agreed to have a meeting with Pam and me. When she realized the possibility of a merger, Beth got excited. She saw much greater potential than I, for one, did not see. I think she said, you might have a Chevrolet in this merger, but I see a Rolls Royce. Here we are, 16 years later, and Empath is making inroads beyond my imagination. Whatever good we've been able to accomplish together, it's been because of this huge push from you and your ability as well to actively listen and make adjustments. Thanks for uh, being there and supporting me and supporting everyone in the program. I'm very proud to know you. I wish you, Paul, and your family the best. Jay and I hope that your retirement is long and lazy and as active as you want it. I hope that you seek every opportunity to enjoy family, to enjoy nature, uh, to enjoy uh, the steps ahead. I thank her for all of the guidance and encouragement and role modeling that she's shared with me over the past decade. Congratulations getting to retirement, Beth. It's well-deserved. Thank you for your amazing service, Beth. Thank you for the work that you have done for so many. You will truly be missed. Enjoy retirement. You hold a very special place in my heart, and I just want to wish you the best retirement. I hope you know how many lives you have changed, and I wish you all the best in this phase of your life. This is not the end of your career by any means. This is just the beginning of the next stage. Bon voyage. Here's to you, Beth, with much love and great affection. Congratulations. I love you. We love you. Much love and enjoy your time going forward. From all of us at ECS, thank you so much. Thank you. Congrats to a well-deserved retirement. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Your impact is on all of us. I'm still not going to cry. <laughs> um, Beth, you have left a, a huge mark um, on this organization, helping it grow into the global leader it is today. Um, if everyone could please raise their hands, please. <laughs> Here's to you, Beth. Um, we wish you all the best in your retirement. So, cheers. <laughs> all right. And now <laughs> it is up to all of us to do what we can do to secure Empath's future. Um, all donations made tonight will go towards Empath's new AMP Up project, which is a three year program focused on helping Boston Housing Authority residents to achieve their goals and move forward towards economic independence. The project is being evaluated by researchers at MIT and Harvard, and it is an integral part of Empath's ambitious goal to serve over 1 million people in the coming years. The Phyllis and Jerome Lyle Rappaport Family Foundation has generously offered to match any gifts made tonight 
up to $1 million, right? <laughs> so I personally like to think, especially their grandson, James Rappaport, who is here with us today, the executive director of the foundation, Tim Medlock, who have joined us this evening. Thank you, James. Thank you, Tim, for being with us tonight. We're glad you guys can make it. Thank you to all of you who are doing, uh, all, all, excuse me, thank you for all that you are doing to ensure the success of the vital, of this vital project. We have to date raised over $400,000 towards the match. And so we are counting on all of you today to help us reach our goal. So as you uh, go on, you can go online to make your donations using the QR codes that are at your tables. Your things for those who aren't technology, tech, tech savvy. <laughs> so everyone should have them. They're also little small ones on the table. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> or as you reach for an envelope to make a gift or a pledge, please give generously. Um, give in honor of Beth to secure her legacy and give in honor of Kim as she embarks on her journey. Give for all of the participants who stand to ben benefit enormously from the AMPA program. And like so many others who have benefited like myself and my fellow CFO alumni in the back. So for those of you joining via Zoom, uh, I'm gonna wave at both cameras. Um, you can follow the link in the chat. So there is a link in the chat. For those here in the room, Empath staff will be coming around to collect envelopes. Or again, you can also use giving the QR codes at your table. So thank you all. Thank you again um, so much for your generosity and for helping Empath to reach new heights. Now I'd like to invite Empath's board chair, Rob Riley, to the stage to introduce our next speaker. Wow, that's a tough act to follow, but I'll, I'll try here. Congratulations, Beth. And from deep down, wish you all the best in your next stage. Um, <clears throat> I'm Rob Riley, the chair of the MPAS board. And I wanna start by just thanking all of you for helping us in this important mission, uh, for your contributions, for all you do to help MPAS. As board chair, I worked alongside Corinne Larson, our previous chair, and a wonderful group of board members and other stakeholders on the transition committee to find a new CEO for MPAP, which as you can imagine was, you know, not an easy thing to do. We were talking about huge shoes to fill. I wanna take a moment to personally thank each of the people who gave so much time and effort uh, in the search. In addition to Corinne, I'd like to thank Lashana Walker, Bill Mansukas, Heidi Brooks, Pam Murray and Richard Gare. Together, we engaged in a very thorough process to find Empath's next CEO. Empath is such a complex organization, engaging in direct service, a learning network, research, and advocacy. And it was not an easy feat to find someone with everything we were looking for, a breadth of policy and practical experience, top-notch leadership skills, and deep understanding of the issues our participants face. It was a long process, but in the end, we found the perfect person to lead Empath in its next phase of the growth. Let me tell you about Empath's next president and CEO, Kim Janey. Kim made history when she was sworn in as Boston's first woman and first black mayor, successfully leading the city through a multitude of unprecedented challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic. During her time in office, she prioritized secure housing for low-income families. She curbed displacement with her housing agenda and increased down payment assistance for first-time home buyers, among other reforms. Prior to becoming mayor, she was elected to the Boston City Council in 2017 as the first woman to represent District 7. In 2020, she was elected by her peers to serve as president of the most diverse city council in Boston's history. Before the city council, she had a long career with the Massachusetts Advocates for Children, where she championed systematic policy reforms to increase equity, excellence, access, and opportunity in the Boston public schools. 
Kim, welcome to Empath. We are so excited to have you here and can't see, can't wait to see where you take Empath next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, thank you all. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. And I really want us to uh, give our gratitude once again to Beth. Please, another round of applause. Uh, it is just so great uh, to be here to see folks in person. Uh, that is wonderful. Uh, some of the board members, I had a chance of meeting you in Zoom, so to meet you here in person, thank you for your commitment to this organization, uh, to the exchange members, to our donors, to our supporters, to our friends, uh, to all of the participants. I am just so grateful uh, to stand here uh, this evening uh, and to be your next uh, CEO and president. Um, I have a very strong connection to Empath, in case folks didn't know. Um, my connection is from when I was in high school. So in high school, I was in 11th grade and found myself pregnant. What to do, right? Um, and it was Quittenton back then that provided life-changing services so that I could continue with my education and I could graduate high school with my peers. That was a very scary time, but I'm very grateful for Crittenton providing me the opportunity to continue on uh, with my studies so that I could give my daughter, who can't even tell you how old she is now. <laughs> this was a while ago, um, but I could give her every opportunity to succeed. And Crittenton truly changed my life. I stand here before you as the former mayor of Boston and as the CEO and president because of Crittenton. So thank you. And, and, and folks are right. Beth is leaving a strong legacy and she's got some big shoes. Uh, folks said the same thing when I took over as mayor, that Marty Walsh had big shoes. What I'm confident is that neither of them. So, uh, you know, one of the things of, of me becoming mayor of the city of Boston, first woman, first person of color to serve as mayor in 199 years. That wasn't the only thing that distinguished me though, being a woman, being a black woman. What distinguished me was my lived experiences. Me understanding the challenges that so many residents in our city face, particularly women and children. I have dedicated my entire career to fighting for families and children and women, uh, to disrupting poverty, and to come here at this organization that invests so much into supporting and strengthening families is truly a full circle moment for me. I understand what it means to live paycheck to paycheck. I know what it's like to live in subsidized housing, my very first apartment, I was able to get with a Section 8 voucher. I spent time as a child living in a shelter for a very short period of time. I was on WIC with my daughter coming up. I understand these challenges and I bring urgency to this work because what I also know is that those challenges should not define your future or your outcomes in terms of success. We, that's right. I know what it's like for people to write you off because of where you live, 
because of your race, because of your gender, because you're poor. And I am here to tell you that we don't have to be defined by that. And the work that Empath does every single day is changing lives and helping people on a path to economic mobility and success for their families. That is the work that we are doing here. It is a vicious cycle. I believe poverty is probably the most violent thing that you can do to a people or a community. The most violent thing. And so the work that we do here at Empath is so incredibly important to disrupting that cycle of poverty. We are here tonight because we know that we don't have to be defined by our circumstances. We live in a country where we should be able to live out our dreams, the American dream, home ownership, raising a family, having a strong community, being connected. That is what we all want. And we are doing the work to make sure that everyone, regardless of race, income, religion, zip code, has that opportunity. For me, this work is so personal. I have fought for social justice my entire life. And this work for me, I take so serious. I'm so excited to be here as Empath's next CEO and president because I know that this is an organization that can truly, truly make a difference. Not just for families here in Boston, but all over the country, all over the world as we have seen in this video. And this is transformational work, transformative, the work that we are doing. The Empath family is strong. We, are, we can see that by the people in this room, by the love shown in this video. And I'm just so grateful. I, I am a person who is grounded on one end by gratitude and the other by joy. And so I'm just grateful to be in this family, this Empath family. I'm just so grateful to join you. In the coming months and years ahead, I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Over the next 100 days, I hope to have lots of conversations uh, with each and every one of you uh, in this room and beyond, um, because we're going to take Empath where? To new heights. We're going to write a new chapter. We're going to make sure that the work that we are doing can reach new heights, new people, new communities, not just here in the city of Boston, not just in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but all over the country and all over the world. So thank you again, Beth, for your leadership. Thank you to the board. Thank you to the donors. Thank you to exchange members, to our, our partners. Thank you to all the participants. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kim. And now let's raise a glass to Empath's next chapter, to Kim Janey, and to New Heights for Empath. Cheers. I'm Nikki Ruiz de Lizuriaga. I'm the Vice President for Institutional Advancement here at Empath. Please excuse my voice. It's not COVID, I promise. I've tested. <laughs> uh, just a little allergies. Uh, I just wanted to thank you all once again for coming tonight. Uh, just to remind you, if you haven't had a chance yet to make your donation, there will be staff walking around with envelopes to collect those donations, uh, or you can also uh, donate online. And uh, as Lashana mentioned, it will be matched up to a million dollars by the Phyllis and Jerome Rappaport Family Foundation for uh, their very generous matching gift. Thank you once again. I'd also like to thank DRC Goldman, Wendy Watson and Pam Murray for hosting this event tonight and for all their help in planning the event, securing sponsorships, getting you all here. <laughs> I'd also like to thank all of the table hosts who have so generously ensured the success of this event. Thank you.
I'd also like to thank our transformative sponsors, the New England Patriots Foundation on PwC, and our change agent sponsors, Timescale Financial, Brown Advisory, Deloitte, Anchor Capital, Eastern Bank, and State Street. Thank you all for your support. Thank you also to the board members and staff who made tonight possible. And thank you once again to all of you who have joined us, both in person and virtually. Your support of Empath's vital work is so important and it really makes it all possible. We really appreciate you all. Thank you again and have a wonderful evening.